Aries, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you. Um, no particular subject, we're gonna do, we'll do my version of the Celtic Cross. We've already kind of tapped in a little bit to October. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Um, you can watch this for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your first house, this could be for you. You know the drill, thank you for however you support the channel. All the information's in the description box, including website link for private reads. Um, just hit the more button below, they will be an extended. That's it. Yeah, thank you for your support, have I said that? Who knows, let's, uh, let's dive in, let's do two more. Aries. Okay, interesting. God, I always have to share my geekiness. Um, so I'm here in, in particular a scene in Star Wars, the prequels, the first prequel, The Phantom Menace, um, when young, young Anakin has created a pod racer and when he fires it up he's screaming, it's working, it's working. So you're doing something that's working Aries, um, is your message. We have the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, it could be going within. It's Venus in Virgo. The, the Empress dressed as the Hermit. It could be financial stability. It could just be feeling spiritually attained. You know, the Nine of Pentacles is about... Huh, interesting. This could be linked to that reading I did, Goddess Inanna, with it's safe to detach from something. The reason being... The Six of Pentacles is the energy of give and take, reciprocity. And she's kind of, obviously, you're giving to an energy there where she's turned her back on that and she's facing the Three of Pentacles. Now, the Three of Pentacles, for me, is the Narnia. It's the weavers of reality, trusting the threads of fate. And the Three of Pentacles in the, uh, uh, if I could talk, the Akashic Tarot is called Chess Pieces, where things are getting moved around. So you could just be turning your attention to that, like not giving to energies that's not reciprocated and just trusting what's for you is for you, safely detaching. Interesting, what's crossing you? <laughs> Good, I like it. Root to the matter. This is, this is wonderful, it's like you're trusting your seeds. Recent past. What do you want? Yeah, this is a follow-on from that. What's coming in? Oh, okay, interesting. We'll dive into that. How you see yourself, how others see you. Advice. And a potential outcome. Oh, that's where it is. Okay, tempted by the devil. All right. Okay, this is another emphasis on complete, complete trust in detaching from a particular thing. If it's a specific outcome that you've got, yes, visualize it, detach. Um, there's going to be temptation. There's going to be a devil energy that comes in to entice. And you're being asked to keep your vibration at a higher frequency. We'll check out where the tower and the strength card is because that's going to give us the insight. But yeah, this is quite a, quite interesting indeed. We have the hangman at the bottom of the deck, the card of surrender with the sun, with death, page of cups, magician. Yeah, Scorpio season is going to be very, very significant uh, for some of you, um, especially in terms of Neptune. Neptune's in its final degree. Well, it's, it's actually retrograde now. It's probably about 28 degrees by the time we get to um, uh, the sun in Scorpio. It's going to push a lot of energy of water. You know, there could be issues with water in homes, in, in uh, external aspects. Um, especially when Neptune moves into its final degree, it will improve from next year when it's in your sign. But there's something significant about the sun in Scorpio here. Possibly maybe a feeling of emotion this is how I see this. If this is a particular person that you've been concentrating on and you, you, you're finally recognising that detachment is only, the only way, this is working. 
do anticipate the devil energy trying to maybe pull you back into whatever's made you detach. So, so to detach means that we've been preoccupied. To detach means that previously we've expended energy on something that's not returning. That can be anything. Um, love. Pushing for career, you know, do, 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 do. I don't know what it is. It could be so many different things. But you're being asked here to know that it's working. It might not look like it's working in the 3D, but it is. Don't let the devil pull you back. So we've got the Nine of Pentacles. What's crossing you is the Five of Pentacles. Now, I kind of feel like this is a, 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 a up and down aspect here. This is abundant, this is not abundant. There could be moments where, yeah, I'm feeling really good, then something will happen, it's like, Ugh. but then something will happen, oh, I feel really, really good. We're supposed to maintain this. Um, root of the matter is the Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles is trusting the plants, uh, the seeds that you planted, whether that's um, planting a seed in the sense of manifestations, whether that's planting a seed in, you know, an idea, um, if this is something to do with um, work-related issues, this might be you, you know, planting an idea into something that normally gets ignored, but eventually it will be seen. Just trusting that what you've put out there is working. In the recent past is the moon. So the moon is suggesting here that there's been difficult times. Moon represents fears, it represents illusions. Perhaps you've been back and forth whether, is this really for me? Is it not for me? Et cetera, et cetera. You've been asked to just trust here. What you want is the Eight of Cups. That was the first card out with Inanna. Saturn in Pisces, Saturn meets um, Neptune, both rulers of cannabis in the um, Herbal Astrology deck is called Detachment. What's coming in, however, is the Seven of Wands. Now, the Seven of Wands is the universe's way of saying you are winning. You've raised above the, the Six of Wands, you know, in that Seven of Wands. You've, you've rose above the ego in some format in your life in some way. Maintain it. But the issue is with this card, because it's the After Tarot, you're jumping back in. You're jumping back into the Six of Wands. This is trying to prove your worth or, you know, trying to show something that yes, you know, look at Aries, look at Aries, I'm, I'm the right choice. You don't need to, you're supposed to let your energy do the talking, so stay in this sort of higher frequency. It's Mars in Leo, so I will be checking out the Tower Meets uh, the Strength card, because that's gonna give us an insight as to what the devil is bringing. How you see yourself is wonderful, Four of Wands, 11-11, balanced masculine and feminine energies, it's Venus in, Ver uh, Venus in Aries, so the Emperor meets the Empress. So you see yourself as being quite balanced. You could be part of a, a very divine mirrored connection. Who knows? You, you see yourself as balanced, it's all I'm getting at. How others see you is the Eight of Swords. Now, the Eight of Swords has given me a couple of things here. It's telling me in the Toff deck, it's interference. You feel like, others feel like there's some sort of blockage or divine interference of some format. But there's a freedom to this. And the freedom is coming in this form of this Ace of Swords. This person's blindfolded at the moment. So for me, there's something that feels very fated, how they look at you or how something looks at you or how the universe looks at you, something that's, you know, you, you're drawn to fate in some format. And the reason why is Jupiter in Gemini, which is where we, where we currently are. Wheel of Fortune meets the lovers, kind of fated connections. Your advice is the star card, hopes, dreams and wishes. Set your intentions. Um, the one thing about the Five of Pentacles uh, and, this, and the Star card can indicate this fear of abandonment. So there could be some sort of wounds coming up to the surface to, to recognise, especially with Chiron being in your sign, which is interesting because my personal Chiron card uh, in the Tarot is in your outcome. But it's here for a couple of reasons. Um, you've got a lot of backing, spiritual guidance. You know, you, you potentially could... F if, if you're a reader yourself, you know, you've got your right guides, you've got your own cards, you, you know, you, you trust in your process. If you're not a reader, you're following the right people. There's something here that you're backed. So just, you know, trust the steps that you've been guided to take. And the star card is here to say, continue healing. Don't force healing. Hopes, dreams and wishes. Follow your North Star. The outcome is the devil. 
Uh, the devil is just temptation. It's something to do with what's trying to pull you back into that six of wands energy. Six of wands is good, but it's also ego. And I just kind of feel like something's, you've, you're raising above something and something, something, something tries to drag you back down. We, we will see what that tower and strength, strength card is saying. Um, center of your triple outcome is the king of pentacles. You will get everything you desire. Whatever this seed is, is going to get placed into this bull and it's going to start charging. So this is like whatever you've planted in, you know, this investment that you've made in whatever format of your life, that time, that energy that you've put into something and you're not seeing results, we're going to jump from a page to a king. That's significant results. This could be financial. This could be energy into a project, creativity, um, healing, person, relationship, whatever it is, whatever energy that you've expended, now it's the time to detach. You will get your jump to the king. This could be commitment, could be just solid, solid partnerships. Your final card is the Chiron card, Nine of Wands. But it's here for a particular reason as well, especially because of the way I was pulled towards the Narnia of the Three of Pentacles. Now, the Nine of Wands is it's High Priestess meets Temperance. It's the moon in Sagittarius. In this deck, this is somebody that's joining you, joining you in your healing pattern. This is somebody that's ready to grow, it's a card of not giving up, it's perseverance. You're almost there. But interestingly, it's dragged me to the non here. Because if you if you take the nine staves and you set them up in such a way where we've got three diagonal representing past, um, three upright representing present, and then three another diagonal going the other way representing the future, is actually the web of weird. And the web of weird is the symbol for the non here. Let me find one for you. That. so within that within the web of weird is every single room you can create every single room from that combination so it's like trust where you pulled the weavers of reality is, is setting you up exactly where you need to be detach surrender continue the healing be mindful of where the devil's going to try and drag you back so let's see where that tower and strength is for Mars in Leo. Yeah, look at that. They're even together, the High Priestess and Temperance. That's the Nine of Wands, Moon in Sagittarius. Next to the Three of Pentacles. Told you, there's that Three of Pentacles, the Narnia. <laughs> you can't back it up. Tower is with the Ten of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. Trust, trust the seed turns into the, the highest, the lowest. <clears throat> so we've got the lowest court card to the highest uh, court card and the lowest pentacle to the highest pentacle, all wedged between the tower. So trust without question and strength. Strength is with the Knight of Swords and the King of Swords. So whatever this is, whatever this temptation is, is going to be something that takes you potentially from the King of Swords to the, to the Knight of Swords. King of Swords is a master of his communication. The Knight of Swords is reckless. So this could be people pushing your buttons. This could be a situation that doesn't look like it's going your way and you react. React through panic, react through fear, which is what's in the past with the, the Moon card. Okay? Interesting. Justice at the bottom. Uh, justice next to that last card is the Ten of Wands. So then when all this Narnia energy comes and you're just left with that Ace of Wands, when the, when the time is right and everything drops, trust. High Priestess represents the Moon. Pisces represents Neptune. In the Herbal Astrology, Bobinzana means trust. Okay? Interesting. Okay, we want to take the in your extended, we're going to look at the Devil. We're going to look at whatever uh, he's representing. So this could be you just, whatever you're doing is working, like I say, whatever this detachment aspect is working, it's going to knock on. I almost feel like this is going to be a chain of events. It's like a domino effect, but it takes you to trust this detachment, this safety to detach from this too much focus, remaining present. So we're going to take in the extended, the energy of the devil, what's going to try and tempt you into old ways. 
um, we'll take what the energy of it, what we know, what we don't know, recent past advice and potential outcome. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if it resonates. Venus in Virgo, Mercury in Taurus, Cancer Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, Mars in Leo, Venus in Aries, Jupiter in Gemini, Aquarius, Capricorn, Moon in Sagittarius, Pisces, Leo, Scorpio, Gemini, Virgo, Moon in Taurus, Gemini, Sun in Capricorn, Jupiter and Saturn in Leo. We have pentacles, cups, wands, swords, everyone's here. Those of you stand out, let me know. Take care, see you soon. Bye.